Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Counselors and therapists like to focus on what they call self-talk. They also refer to it as the tape running in your head. It's possible now that that's been updated to a meme. This is the conversation that you have with yourself that kind of highlights and confirms your outlook on life. It's your identity that you repeat again and again, usually impressed on you in childhood, usually negative. Peter, you're such a clutch. You're always tripping over things and breaking things. You dummy, you always say the wrong thing at the wrong time. I'm horrible at math and no good with numbers. With my big nose and gigantic feet, nobody will ever marry me. The therapeutic goal is to change that internal conversation to where you rehearse positive thoughts and focus on your good attributes. You affirm that you're good enough and smart enough and capable enough to be a successful human being. With today's reading from 1 John 1, I was thinking about how this can affect our Christian witness as well. We need to be constantly reminding ourselves of God's reality and truth in order to stay faithful and steadfast. So here's a good one to imprint on our heart and minds. The one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Imagine saying this to yourself throughout the day. The one who is in me is greater than the one who is in the world. God who is in me is greater than all who would oppose me. That's what John says. You are from God and have defeated them. This takes seriously the actual and ongoing efforts of the devil. He's not a fairy tale. He's not make-believe. He's not a pretend boogeyman to scare children. As Ephesians 6 tells us, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the unseen realm. The devil and all who are in league with him are opposed to Christ and seek to destroy his kingdom and his people. There are false prophets and evil spirits at work to separate us from God and his truth. Now we certainly bring trouble on ourselves. Our sinful flesh and our spiritual laziness often lead us astray. We are our own worst enemies when we refuse to receive and employ the Lord's gifts. But we must not forget that there is an enemy at work behind the scenes, persistently causing strife and discord mayhem and chaos. This is the old evil foe who is behind every natural disaster, every terrorist attack, every murderous atrocity, every system malfunction. Second Thessalonians 2 says, the work of Satan is displayed in all kinds of counterfeit miracles, signs and wonders, and in, in every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing. As we encounter this in our culture, 
as we experience in our lives, as we are around people who are being used as instruments of darkness, we have to say, the one who is in me is greater than the one who is in the world. This is helpful, valuable, and necessary to remaining in Christ and walking in His ways as we're besieged and under attack, mocked and scorned for staying faithful, as we're forlorn and subject to frustration when institutions are co-opted by deceptive spirits as we're threatened and terrorized by social demonization, as we're uneasy and unsettled in the midst of a rapidly changing environment, as we're tired and on the verge of quitting, ready to give up because nothing seems to matter anymore, as we are assaulted by the idea that it's just little old me up against a big bad world in the midst of a vast impersonal universe. We tell ourselves, the one who is in me is greater than the one who is in the world. He who is in me is stronger than anything outside me. And we tell each other, the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. And because the Lord is in you, because Jesus has made his throne in your heart, because your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, no one can take God away from you. They can't get to him inside of you. Christ truly reigns within you. As someone once wrote, Were they to take our house, goods, honor, child, or spouse? The life be wrenched away, they cannot win the day. The kingdom's ours forever. So you take this helpful phrase with you, you repeat it intentionally throughout the day, and what happens? You become calm. The Holy Spirit soothes your troubled thoughts. He assures your fearful emotions. He brings down your worry and anxiety. We have this tendency to project the worst, to exaggerate all the bad things that could happen, the freckle that becomes hideous cancer in minutes, the unexpected repair that becomes bankruptcy right away, the the middle-of-the-night thought that everything will crash tomorrow. But the peace of God calms all that. You become centered in Christ on the inside, and that calmness radiates outward. It actually supplies confidence. As someone else wrote, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Along with calm, this constant reminder gives you focus. Who are you living for? What are you striving for? Eventually, the things of the world are revealed to be empty or only temporary. Still, the prince of this world wants to corrupt and ensnare. He wants to convince you that he's in charge, that our allegiance is to him, that we somehow are obligated and beholden. At the very least, keep your head down. Go go along to get along. Don't dare take a stand or stand out. But we can remind ourselves that Christ 
really is Lord. He governs and oversees and directs our lives. The one who is in me guides me in godly ways. He leads me in the wholesome and proper use of my time and talents and treasure. The devil's dancing around like an idiot, desperately trying to distract us. Jesus carries us forward with clear vision. And along with calm and focus, we gain energy. All is not lost. While we're losing some battles, the outcome of the war is not in doubt. The more powerful one is on our side. Jesus confronted the devil and was victorious. His death and resurrection are the defining event and statement now and forever. We serve a risen Savior. And His saving will and divine purpose are in effect. There are great things for us to accomplish. There are good works to fulfill. There are blessings to receive and share. So the motivating power comes again and again to strengthen to energize, to move, to make God's people, you and me, capable and qualified for lives of dynamic faith. Because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses human understanding guards your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.